back here on the Hunter Call of the Wild, and today we are going to be counting down the top 12 best DLCs in the Hunter Call of the Wild. Now, it's been about a year and a half since we did this video, and a lot of new content has come out in that time. This time, we're going to be doing 12 DLCs as opposed to 10, because there are so many amazing DLCs in this game, and I just wanted to show them all to you. Now, let me know in the comments, guys, what your absolute favorite DLC is, something that you just could not live without, and we are going to head right into it. Coming in at number 12 on our list of top 12 best DLCs in Call of the Wild is the Ambusher DLC. Now, the Ambusher DLC came out within the last year. It comes with the Marathi Model 1894 Lever Action Rifle. It also comes with the Quist Red Pro Electronic Collar, and it comes with the Takedown Recurve Bow. Now, I'm going to show you every weapon in all of these DLCs in today's video, starting off with the Marathi. Now, the Marathi is actually one of my favorite rifles. It probably has the most insane penetration of any rifle in the entire game. The only drawback is that it only zeroes up to 150 meters. It is good for classes 4 to 8. Most 4 to 8 rifles, however, do zero up to 300 meters, so that is the one drawback. Well, let me show you the crazy penetration it is going to get. Okay, so we're going to take a white tail here. we took two. Beauty. So it does reload fairly quickly and the Moretti uses the 44 Magnum ammo and I am using the flat nose hard cast bullets that have the most penetration. Look, it has 70 for penetration. Holy. And look at this white tail. I got a double lung heart shot and look at the crazy penetration on an angle shot. That is pretty crazy. But because of that, it is a lot of fun to use. And I also wanted to mention that somewhere in the video, I am going to share a key phrase. Drop that in the comments for your chance to be featured in a video. We choose one person each month, and if you are on console, then it would be a live voice chat also featured in a video. Let's continue. This is the Quist Red Pro Electronic Collar. Basically, this has every collar in the game and then some. So what you do is you lift up the handheld and every collar for every species in Revontuli Coast, that's the map we're on right now, is at our disposal right here. The one bonus it does have have is when you take this to Mississippi Acres, you can actually call in alligators and there is no alligator collar in the game aside from using the electronic collar. So if I were to be duck hunting right here, I have all of the collars for all of the ducks on this map and you just click on them and it makes the call for it. So that is very, very cool and very handy. Then we have the takedown recurve bow and this is actually my absolute favorite bow in the entire game. So you can use it with or without a scope. Any of the bow scopes will fit on it except for the crossbow scope and it uses the 300, 420, and 600 grain arrows. So the Ambusher DLC is a really good one. I really like it. Coming in at number 11 on our list of top 12 best DLCs in Call of the Wild is the Saber 4x4 four-wheeler. Now, the four-wheeler is the only available vehicle in the game. It does come for free when you are on console, but you do have to purchase it as a DLC if you are on PC. It does spook animals for about 300 to 400 meters, so it's not meant for hunting, but it is amazing for unlocking your map and for traveling very far distances. The one really cool thing about the four-wheeler is if you are playing in multiplayer and one person on the map owns it, everyone can use the four-wheeler. But players who don't own the DLC would have to purchase it in the game for 20K in game currency. And I actually didn't know that. I learned that today. So the four-wheeler goes about 40 kilometers an hour. It can reach speeds of 60 when it is going downhill and when it's going uphill, then it struggles and goes a little bit slower. And if you do crash into enough things, you can actually make it explode and catch on fire, which is kind of fun, but not very productive. Coming in at number 10 on our list of top 12 best DLCs in Call of the Wild is Weapon Pack 1. Now, Weapon Pack 1 comes with the Virant 22 LR, the Huyi Recurve Bow, and the Crosspoint CB165 Crossbow. So this is the Virant. The Virant zeroes in at 50, 100, and 150 meters. This is good for class one only, and I actually take the Virant with me to every map that has class one species on it. It has 10 shots, so it 
it is the best 22 in the game. We do also have the Zarza 22, but the Zarza only has five shots. And when you're shooting ducks out of the sky, 10 shots is definitely going to help a lot more than five is. Let's see if we can get this guy. Got him, beauty. So I love using the Virant 22, as well as the CB165 crossbow. Now the crossbow has its own scope. It's the only bow with an adjustable scope. And the crossbow is the only bow that you can lay prone and take a shot without the Leica Pro bow skill. Now I just spawn in here to my moose grind and we have a level five here. So we're gonna try and take him down with the crossbow. Okay, we are about 40 meters from this very big moose and we are gonna use the crossbow. So the crossbow zeroes in at 20, 40, and 60 meters. So we're gonna zero to 40. We're gonna lay prone. The crossbow uses bolts. We have the 600 green bolts in, and here we go. That looked beautiful, and he's got aggressive. Drop, baby. Why is he not dropping? What? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh, he's, gonna, he's gonna murder me. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I can't get up, move. Get him! Oh my gosh! I almost muffed that. I can't believe <laughs> we got away with that. Jeez, that looked like a good shot. What the heck happened? Oh, I got scapula. Oh, look how close that is. That is a man, that is a bit of a ripoff, but we got him in the nick of time. And he is a 288.73. And look at the crazy penetration with the 600 grains using the crossbow. Now I was 3.66 meters away, but it does have really great penetration. And that is is a really beautiful moose. I'm actually gonna taxi that. So the crossbow is one of the best bows in the game and there's nothing like it. So now we're going to take down a moose with the Hu Yi recurve bow. Now the recurve bow uses the 350, 540, and 700 grain broadhead traditional arrows. The trick with the recurve is you wanna get as close as possible. You wanna be at least 40 meters or closer and that is very close. Now the recurve is definitely one of the most challenging bows to use in the game, but once you get the hang of it, it is a lot of fun to use. Okay, so this guy is 30 meters. Now the recurve bow zeroes in at 20, 40, and 60 meters. I think I'm gonna get a little bit closer. Keeps moving. Okay, we're about 35 meters from this moose. I'm gonna zero down to 20. Basically, you wanna aim right at the tip of the arrow. Here we go. We got him! Lost my voice there, sorry about that. We got him. And I'm pretty sure that was a heart shot. It was, double long heart. Look at that shot. So look at the crazy penetration. It literally went through this moose and out the other side. And that was a 30.78 meter shot with the 700 grain broadheads. So the recurve is a lot of fun and that is weapon pack one. Coming in at number nine on our list of top 12 best DLCs in Call of the Wild is the Smoke and Barrels weapon pack. Now the Smoke and Barrels weapon pack comes with the Hudzik 50 cap lock muzzle loader, the M1 Iwaniak, and the Miller Model 1891 shotgun. Now this is the M1. The M1 is one of the best four to eight rifles in the game. Oh, that's a big white tail. <laughs> Where did you come from? And what is spooking that guy out? We gotta get him. Now the M1 is well known for that ping it makes when you do shoot the last bullet. And I will show you that in just a second. Now this guy is 120 meters. How you doing my dude? You gonna stop? Got him, beautiful. Now I'm gonna shoot two more shots just so I can show you this ping. And man, are they running fast. And here we go. And there it is, beautiful. Okay, so here is our level three. And he is a 263.9 diamond. And there you go. There is the shot from the M1. So it has amazing penetration. And I actually shot over 10,000 whitetail with the M1 when I first started grinding for whitetail. And it did an amazing job. And that is one more diamond whitetail for our whitetail grind. And then we have the Hudzik 50 cap lock muzzle loader. And between the two ammos, it is good for classes three to eight. Now it only has one shot. It zeroes in at 50, 75, and one. 100 meters max. So you do have to get fairly close. And once you take that shot, you are going to be left in a big pile of smoke. It comes with its own scope, which is very sweet. 
Hans Blatt, and it takes about a year and a half to reload. Not quite, but it does take a very long time. I'm actually going to keep talking through this reload animation so you can see exactly how long it does take to reload. Now, if you do want to take a follow-up shot, what you can do is cycle over to another weapon, take your follow-up shot, and then reload the muzzle loader after. And we're just about done, and that is how long it takes to reload the muzzle loader. So it's not a very practical weapon, but it is a very fun one. And here is our white tail. We didn't even get double lung from 97 meters, but it did definitely splat this white tail and it is one of the most popular weapons in the game. Okay and the last weapon in the smoke and barrels weapon pack is the Miller model 1891 10 gauge lever action shotgun. Now it does not come with the scope it zeroes in at 25 50 and 75 meters and splat beautiful is that guy flying with some pellets in him? He is. Well, she is, but she's gonna go matey and splat. The Miller Model 1891 shotgun has three shots. Ooh, just one pellet, but that did the job. Now it uses the brass, birdshot, buckshot, and slugs. The birdshot is good for class one. The buckshot is good for classes four to seven. And the slugs are good for classes six to nine. So this covers every class except for classes two and three. Coming in at number eight on our list of top 12 best DLCs in Called Wild is a tie between the Bloodhound DLC and the Labrador Retriever DLC. And I am going to show you both. So this is the Bloodhound. I actually hunt with my Bloodhound pretty much everywhere that I go. He is amazing for tracking and having a companion with you is pretty fun as well. Now by playing with your dog or showing him some affection, you can level up his bond with you. You can give him a treat. Now they are very expensive treats, but it's just in-game money. And there you go. Now he is my best friend. And by leveling him up to three hearts, he will perform the best for you. And by just pressing double B on the keyboard, he will go out and track my kills for me. And he will pick up blood if he is within 50 meters of it. And you don't have to find the blood first. He will find it and he will do the tracking. Now, if you have killed more than one animal and you want your dog to track a specific one first, pick up the blood for that animal and he will track that one first. Now, bloodhounds do have to be leveled up and when you are leveling them up, you can actually choose their characteristics in game. So there we go. He found our moose for us. In the kennel is where you can choose between the bloodhound and the retriever. Those are the two only dog species that we have in the game. You can choose which sex you want them to be and which fur type. And there are six different choices for the bloodhound. Now I do have several dogs, but Shadow and Ladybug are the two that I use all of the time and they are fully leveled up. These are the traits that I have selected for this dog, but especially when I'm streaming, I can talk to chat the entire time and my bloodhound will do all of the tracking for me and I just find it very, very convenient. So the bloodhound does your tracking for you and the Labrador Retriever, which I have out right now, what he does or she is pick up your class one species. Now, depending how you have your lab leveled up, he can pick up kills as far away as about 150 meters. So let's take out this duck. Beautiful. Now you can just pull open the wheel and click retrieve, or you can just press BB and he will track for you. And he is pretty darn cute. So the retriever will retrieve any class one species, even turkeys, which are just about the same size as the dog. It's pretty funny watching her bring turkeys to me. They're pretty cumbersome, but she does an amazing job. So your lab will save you a lot of time if you like to hunt class one species. And good job. Look how realistic they are. Very cool. And there's our deck. Coming in at number seven on our list of top 12 best DLCs in Call of the Wild is the Tripod and Tree Stand DLC. Now the Tripod and Tree Stands, basically what their purpose is, is to protect your zones. When you are in any hunting structure, tripod, tree stand, or even the structures on your map or any hunting blinds, they will reduce hunting pressure. So basically when you're not in a tripod or a tree stand or any hunting structure, you could only kill three animals from any zone and your fourth kill will delete the zone. Oh, and here come the bears. Beautiful. But when you are in a hunting structure, like the tripod or tree stand, you can then kill 15 animals and the 16th kill will delete the zone. No one's going to kill 16 animals all at once unless they're frozen. So your zone is very, very safe when you are hunting from a tripod or tree stand. So this is how much hunting pressure we have before I shoot these bears. So I'm going to shoot them both. 
and double splat. And that is now triple hunting pressure from a tripod. So that is a lot less pressure for sure. And then over here, I do have a tree stand. Now they don't fit in every tree in the game. Typically they fit on thicker trees. So you just run right up press E and we are at the top. So it basically it's whichever you prefer. I tend to use tripods more than tree stands, but tree stands are very, very useful and effective as well. So when you're doing any great one grind, you're definitely gonna want the tripod and tree stand DLC to protect your zones and give you some added elevation. And when you purchase the tripod and tree stand DLC, you do get three of each in the pack. And then they are 16,000 in-game dollars to purchase more. And the max you can put down on on your map is 32 of each. Coming in at number six on our list of top 12 best DLCs in Call of the Wild is the Seyeska Trophy Lodge. Now there are two different Trophy Lodge DLCs that you can choose from, but the Seyeska one, this one right here, is by far my favorite. The reason is because it has a lot more light in it. I find the Spring Creek Manor Trophy Lodge to be a little dim and dark, and I will show you that in just a second. So in the Seyeska Trophy Lodge, you are going to have a lot more floor mounts than you will in the Spring Creek Manor. Now, with any of these lodges, the max amount of lodges you can have is five of each. But this is my, basically my Moose and Black Bear Lodge, and uh, this is my favorite trophy ever. But after putting in all that hard work hunting, you want a spot where you can enjoy your trophies, and the Seyeska Lodge is the absolute best. You can also create multi-mounts, like this right here, putting more than one animal in a mount. So right now, I have five of each different lodge, but let me show you just to show you the difference. Let's go into a Spring Creek Manor Lodge. So this is the Spring Creek Manor Trophy Lodge. So as I mentioned, I don't have a huge amount of trophies in here because I just don't love this lodge. It has a much lower ceiling. I know I'm picky picky, but there's not a lot of windows and there's not a lot of floor mounts, mostly wall mounts. And most trophies do look better on a floor mount. So I much prefer the Seyeska Lodge. Coming in at number five on our list of top 12 while best DLCs in Call of the Wild is the High Tech Hunting DLC. Now the High Tech Hunting DLC basically is what allows you to hunt at night. It comes with the Gen Zero night vision binoculars. So let me just show you. This is what you see at night with the apex view. Now this is a very bright night. We have a full moon. Some nights you literally see nothing but black and outlines when you do spot animals. But when you use the Gen Zeros, basically everything is bright green, but you can see everything. And they are 8x50 rangefinder binoculars. The pack also comes with the night vision scope. So this is just the regular Hyperion scope, just to compare it. And now this is the night vision scope. So the magnification is not great, but it is definitely something you can get used to. When Red Deer used to drink at night, I used to grind Red Deer with the night vision scope, and I used to take 300 meter shots and drop Red Deer all the time. You just gotta get used to it. Somehow I didn't get a good shot. Come on. Oh, we got him. It also comes with the Cotter CB65 bow and the bright side rangefinder bow sight. And this sight actually will measure the distance to your target and it will fit on any bow. And also the high tech hunting DLC does include the 300, the 420 and the 600 grain tracer arrows. So basically when you use these arrows in the dark, they have a flashing light. So here you go. This is the bright side rangefinder bow sight. So basically with the red dot, it tells you right on the screen to press E to spot the animal. So the red dot measures the distance. Why isn't it working? Well, normally, <laughs> normally you press E and then what happens is the distance shows up right at the top of the scope. And it basically, you still want a zero. It zeroes in at 20, 40, and 60, but it measures the distance for you. So you know what to zero to. So I'm gonna try, I don't know if it's even gonna let me take a shot. This bear is about 40 meters. Well, I took a shot. <laughs> I did it pretty quick, so I don't think I got a good shot, but I just wanted to show you the CB65, and I did want to show you the rangefinder bow sight. I think it needs to be fixed, but quite honestly, even without the rangefinder bow sight, the high-tech hunting DLC is a DLC I could not live without. Simply, I could not live without the rangefinder night vision binoculars. I use them all the time. 
Now, if you are enjoying the video or finding it useful in any way, take a second and hit that subscribe button for more daily Call of the Wild content. And while you're down there, click that like button so the video can reach more amazing people. Thank you guys so much. Coming in at number four on our list of top 12 best DLCs in Call of the Wild is the Tent and Ground Blind DLC. Now, Tents is something I could definitely not live without in the Hunter Call of the Wild. Tents are basically portable outposts. The maximum amount of tents you can put down on any map is 16. So basically, you can fast travel to any tent. You can access the storage locker from any tent. You can purchase from the store or change your loadout. And you can change the time. Tents are absolutely absolutely imperative for doing any great one grind or any grind of any kind and basically just putting tents down at popular locations on your map will allow you to do way less running and way more hunting. This is the ground blind that comes in this DLC. Now I'm going to be very honest with you guys. I never use these. I much prefer this one and I believe this one comes in the duck and cover DLC but I like them to have an open top. Now it's very hard to put anything down on this hill but I'm going to put one down just so I can show you. There we go. So basically, these blinds do the same thing that tripods and tree stands do. They don't give you elevation, but they do give you reduced hunting pressure and they do hide you. They do give you cover from animals. So I guess they're handy somewhat. I just really don't use them in the game, but tents I use just an insane amount. And this is one DLC I highly, highly recommend. Now I should mention that when you do purchase the tent and ground blind DLC, it comes with one of every color of tent. Now tents are now customizable, so you can press C and you can customize your tents. The other thing I should mention is that tents are very expensive. They're 16,000 in-game dollars, but they are worth every single penny. So you can customize them. So these are my logo colors. So basically you can change any of the colors and make them look any way that you want. So that's the orange and the cream, but you can put patterns on them. Now, one thing I do want to mention as well is when you are purchasing tents, you want to purchase the same variation. So basically, if you're buying tents, you should buy all of the camo or all of the blue. It doesn't matter which one, but you should choose one and stick with it. The reason is you can carry multiples of the same variation. They stack. So I can carry one or a hundred of the camo tents, but when I want to carry a blue tent and a camo tent, I have to carry them separately separately because they don't stack. So that is definitely why you want to purchase the same variation of tent or tripod or anything really in the game, any of the ground blinds or hunting structures. Coming in at number three on our list of top 12 best DLCs in Call of the Wild is the Hunter Power Pack. Now the Hunter Power Pack comes with the Malmer 7mm bolt action, the Olsen Model 23 308 bolt action, and the Sarugi LRR 338 bolt action rifle. So we're going to start with the Sarugi. So the Sarugi zeroes in at actually all of these three weapons zero in at 75, 150, and 300 meters. Now basically the 338 would be direct competition for the 300 Magnum and the Arzina 300. The winner would be the Arzina, but we will talk about that very soon. So I'm going to zero to 150. Now the one thing I don't love about these bolt action rifles is the little bit of extra jolt that you get when you are trying to line up a follow-up shot. That just happens with bolt actions. Now watch as I shoot this bear, the little jolt after I shoot it, that is what I'm referring to. See that little click click? And then you have to line up your shot. But it is quite a powerful weapon. So the Sarugi is good from classes seven to nine. So it's great for all those big game animals in the game. And we got a double lung from 250 meters with the Sarugi. So it did a pretty great job. So now we're gonna shoot some Rocky Mountain Elk with the Malmer seven millimeter Magnum. Now, what's so amazing about the seven millimeter Malmer is that it is good from classes four all the way up to nine. And we do have some some really nice elk across the street here. I know it's not a street, but I call it the street. Okay, so it only has three shots, but that's three times more than the non-DLC seven millimeter. Now it's still gonna have that little bit of jolt after you take each shot, but let's try and take some elk down. Okay, we're gonna zero to 300. Here we go. Ooh, splat. And my problem was that I left the light on. I'd really like to get that bear. Hey dude, where are you going? 
man, three shots and I needed more. It did reload fairly quickly and I lost my bear. There it is. And he is gonna die. So because this seven millimeter is good from classes four to nine, that eliminates the need to even carry a seven to nine rifle. Okay, let's have a look at this elk. So we got double lung and thoracic there from 277 meters with the seven millimeter. And I don't know why. What am I drowning? I'm drowning. <laughs> Oops. So now we're gonna try out the Olsen Model 23308. Now this rifle comes with four shots and it is quite powerful. However, it is not my favorite 308 in the game. That would be the Zarza 308, which I will show you in just a moment. All right. See that little I don't like that, but we did get to beauty. Okay, so we got left lung and stomach there. We got pretty crazy penetration from 195 meters. So it is very powerful. So the Hunter Power Pack is a pretty good one. Coming in at number two on our list of top 12 best DLCs in Call of the Wild is the Modern Rifles DLC. Now the Modern Rifles DLC comes with the Zarza 308, the Zarza 223, and the Zarza 22 LR. So this is the Zarza 308, and this is my absolute favorite class 4 to 8 rifle in the entire game. It is a little quieter than the rest of the 4 to 8s, and I just love how it handles. I do use it regularly on my whitetail grind, and we're gonna take two whitetail down right now. See, it's just amazing. I love it. So we got a double lung shot from 210 meters and absolutely splattered this whitetail. So that's the 308. And I find that it is probably the most popular 4 to 8 in the game, not just from my perspective, but when I watch people hunting, this is the rifle that they are using for classes 4 to 8. And then we have the Zarza 15 223. Now, for some reason, the Zarza 223 gets a bad rap, but I actually really like this rifle for small predators. So this is good for classes two to four, and it is amazing for things like red fox, raccoons, bobcats, things like that. Oh, we just splattered him. So here's our fox. Oh, we got spine. I thought I'd have more of a drop. I guess not. So that was my bad, but I actually really like these are the 223 and I use it for small predators all the time. And then last but not least, we have the Zarza 22. Now, the main difference between the Zarza 22 and the Virant 22 is five shots. The Zarza 22 has five shots and the Virant has 10. They both zero in at 50, 100, and 150 meters. But the nice thing is, if you purchase the Modern Rifles DLC, you don't have to purchase another weapon pack just to get something for those class one species. Got him! Beauty. And you don't need a vital when you're shooting any class ones, but there you go. That's the Modern Rifles DLC. Coming in at number one on our list of top 12 best DLCs in Call of the Wild is the High Caliber Weapon DLC. Now the High Caliber Weapon Pack comes with the Arzina 300 Mag Tactical, the 4570 Jernberg Superior, and the Strandberg 10 SA Executive Shotgun. And this pack is absolutely incredible. And I just I just wanted to show you guys something because it is so crazy. Yesterday while making this video, I ran up to this zone to show the high caliber weapon pack. I was gonna shoot one of these moose with the Arzina and my first super rare in the last three years was in this zone waiting for me. I lost it. <laughs> And I wasn't even grinding moose, I was making this video. So we're not gonna shoot him right now. We're gonna shoot him live on stream. That's gonna happen April the 16th. And the stream will start at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on YouTube. If you guys would like to come and see me shoot him, <laughs> that is my absolute dream trophy. I am, I am, I don't even know what to say. That's insane. Anyway, let's continue with the video. Holy. Okay, this is the Arzina. This is my absolute favorite weapon in the entire game. It is good for classes seven to nine. When you have three points in recoil management, it has almost no recoil. I'm gonna shoot this guy with the Arzina. So watch the lack of recoil. It's insane. Look at that! Like what? And there it goes. <laughs> Such a great rifle, oh my gosh. 
And here he is. And on an angle, we got liver and stomach. Wasn't the best shot. It was a little far back there. But the Arzina can actually double lung a moose on a perfectly broadside moose. That's something that the 300 Magnum and the 338 struggle to do on moose. So it's just an absolutely incredible rifle. Now, when I did the last top 10 DLC video, my number one pick, which isn't even on the list right now, was the 300 Magnum that comes in the Yukon Valley DLC. Now, the reason I don't have it on the list this time is because if you have the high caliber weapon DLC and you have the new Arzina 300 AR, you don't need the 300 Magnum. The 300 Magnum is still an amazing rifle, but the 300 AR is better, has less recoil than the 300 Magnum. Actually, let me shoot a moose just to show you the 300 Magnum. Now, the other thing is the 300 Magnum is not nearly as accessible to new players as the Arzina 300 is. With the Arzina, you can just simply purchase the high caliber weapon DLC. And anytime you purchase a weapon DLC, when you go into the store to purchase those weapons, they are $0. However, the 300 Magnum, once you purchase the Yukon Valley DLC, is $75,000 in game dollars. And you do have to unlock it as a new player. So that makes it very hard to get for new players. Whereas this one is really easy to get your hands on. So this is the 300 Magnum. Now, the one thing I will say for the 300 Magnum compared to the Arzina is the sound of the rifle. This does sound more powerful. It isn't more powerful, but it sounds like it. That big bang. Love it. So the Arzina is good from classes seven to nine, just like the 300. They use the same ammo. I mean, the 300 Magnum is still an absolutely incredible rifle. It's just a little bit not quite as good as the Arzina. Okay, so here is a moose shot with the 300 Magnum. So we did get a right lung shot on a perfectly broadside moose. It did not make it through to the second lung, but still an amazing rifle. So then we have here the Jernberg 45 570 single shot pistol. So this pistol is good from classes four all the way up to nine. I think it only weighs half a kilogram, maybe one. I'll check in the store in just a sec, but you only get the one shot. So this pistol zeroes in at 50, 100, and 200 meters. So it does have a lot more range than regular pistols do in the game. And it's just one shot, so you better make it a good one. So let's shoot this moose and see how we do. Drop, baby. Has to be a good shot. <laughs> not dropping. What? All right, we will try that again. Okay, we have the 4570 Jernberg. We're zero to 200. These moose are 160 meters away. Hmm, let's try for a hard shot. I'm gonna have to aim a little low. Did I get him? I did get him. I couldn't see it. And there's the vital blood. So let's have a look at this baby. And we got a beautiful heart shot. Not a huge amount of penetration, eh? Just kind of touched the heart and that is it. But it's a very versatile weapon. Goes all the way up to class nine and is very light in your inventory. So there it is in the store. It does weigh one kilogram. And then we have the 10 gauge Strandberg. And this shotgun is absolutely incredible. I really, really like it. When I first started shooting stubble quail with it and I was dropping every single one I was like wow this shotgun is incredible so this is me here taking down my very first diamond stubble quail so I think this pack is actually worth it just for the Arzina the other two weapons are just kind of a bonus and they are actually pretty darn great so there you have it guys and if you are new to the channel and you haven't done so yet hit that subscribe button if you did enjoy the video hit that like and thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed today's video and would like to watch more, click here for the best weapons playlist.